formally welcome everyone to this first presentation at 2022 ABLE. Um, we have with us Jake Gephardt and Jonah Breed. They will be presenting on toward justice in ePortfolio models, who gets recognized as excellent. And thank you both for um, responding to the call for papers and being here today. Take it away. All right, thank you everybody. Uh, just kind of want to outline uh, how we're going to approach this today. Uh, ours is going to be a shorter presentation. Uh, we actually would love some discussion and feedback at the end for this. This is one way that managed to work for our university and we're hoping that it's going to work well as we re-implement it on our website. And if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat. And if you've got something really pressing or you just have to be heard, feel free to unmute yourselves. We do not mind that one bit. Uh, as we said earlier, my name is Jake. Jonah is the person that's going to be really driving most of this. Uh, if you have any questions for us afterwards, we'll include our contact information as well. And we hope that you enjoy this brief discussion we have about uh, uh, deciding, you know, how do you recognize excellence in ePortfolios and one of the ways that it managed to work for our university. So, Jonah, if you will get sharing started, I will pass it along over to you. Hey, good morning, everyone. Can everyone hear me all right? Sounds good. Awesome. <clears throat> well, like Jake was saying, today um, I'm here um, with him to talk to y'all. Uh, about um, kind of recognizing um, or deciding how excellence gets recognized in ePortfolios. And I kind of wanted to frame this presentation through some of the work I've been doing over the summer for our university, um, which has been uh, reworking our university's um, or university writings webpage on kind of our um, example ePortfolios. So um, a brief agenda. Uh, for today is uh, I want to start with a bit of an icebreaker. Um, I'll, I think I'll have, since there's about 20 of you, I think it'll be better if y'all respond in the chat. Um, and then I'll go over kind of my revision goals in the process that I went through, um, the rubric that had a role to play um, in that process. I'll go over some of the examples of the work that we've done. And then uh, I'd like to have some discussion um, at the very end of the meeting. So let's begin. Um, I know most of us have kind of already shared um, like where we're from uh, before the meeting started, but um, feel free to type it in the chat again. And uh, also, uh, what is something that makes you feel happy, confident, or motivated? Um, if you'd like to speak up, you can, but we'll just take a minute or two to kind of get responses to these. Um, while y'all are typing, um, my name is Jonah Breed. I'm currently a uh, master's student at Auburn University. I am a graduate assistant for university writing. Um, and uh, music is something that makes me feel really happy. I, uh, I like to listen to it while I'm doing most things. So yeah, let me take a look at the chat. Oh, Emily, knitting knitting is a, such a cool such a cool hobby. That's awesome. Oh, metal smithing. That's really interesting, Kim. Ling Ma, I've been I've been getting into cooking pretty recently. I find that it's it's very rewarding, kind of as you. Um, as you uh, work through it. Okay, Jeff. Yeah, I, I just dog sat for someone over the past couple of weeks and it's been really fun to kind of spend some time with their pets. I, uh, I can't have them at the apartment that I'm in, so I, I appreciate any time I get to spend with dogs. I love cats too. Um, let's see. Um, Maria, I, I love uh, I, I love binging through binging through shows. It's uh, sometimes got to pace myself. Just want to thank everybody for tossing your uh, adventures in chat and things like that. Always appreciate the uh, participation and 
seeing the various backgrounds is really interesting and kind of leads into uh, the issue we had with, okay, with all these interesting backgrounds and awesome things, how do you actually recognize and quantify that? And so thank you very much. Yeah, thank you all. Um, let's, uh, let's go ahead and move on, but thank you so much for the responses. Um, let me see. Okay, so let's go over kind of my revision goals um, for the summer. So kind of my broad assignment was to take the existing web page we had for ePortfolios and um, kind of um, reselect and rework that page, um, keeping in mind um, kind of the broader goal of our presentation, which is, you know, who are we deciding to recognize as excellent for our ePortfolio examples? Um, and so my two goals were to, one, I wanted to select new ePortfolios to include on the web page that both reflect the student body of Auburn. In that, I mean that it represents kind of the wide uh, arrangement of uh, studies and majors, um, but also the wide um, amount of uh, student lived experiences. And in that are diverse identities and um, uh, different ways people were raised and where people are from. Um, also, I wanted to offer a strong variety of examples for students. Um, this is keeping in mind that most people that are looking at this web page are probably those um, aiming to uh, create their own ePortfolio and might need a guide um, to uh, help them kind of through that. So if I can offer, you know, a wide range that covers both um, majors and um, identities, that'll help the student looking for an example find uh, an excellent example that uh, most, uh, that accurately kind of uh, speaks to them. Uh, the second goal I had is I wanted to present them in a way that indicates their strengths. Um, my first reason for doing this is I think it gives directions for the students looking at the page. Um, previously, um, our web page just had the names of the students in like the first page of their ePortfolio. Um, so the main thing you were looking at was a picture of the creator of the ePortfolio and maybe their major. And so I didn't really like how this um, uh, didn't really say much about the ePortfolio. It was kind of, you kind of just had to click through them and see which ones spoke the most to you. Um, and so I wanted to uh, do something to change that. And then also um, by presenting them in a way that indicates the strengths of the ePortfolio, I thought that this kind of avoided tokenizing the students with diverse backgrounds, um, as you can draw the attention um, of why we're recognizing them to um, the strengths of their ePortfolio. Right, so my process for doing this, um, so to select the rubrics, or sorry, to select the portfolios, um, university writing has had a rubric that we've used um, for like the, I think the latest iteration of it was from 2016. Um, they've used that rubric for uh, several different things um, to assess ePortfolios. So I, I kind of used it as a guideline um, to look through the pool of ePortfolios that I had to choose from. I didn't rank them or anything. I just um, thought that it broke down kind of the sections of each ePortfolio into categories that were um, uh, easy to um, identify. And um, it helped me at least kind of categorize uh, the ones I was looking at into ones with different strengths in different areas. Um, and I did consider the identities of the creators as I selected them. Uh, as I said earlier, one of my goals was to represent the wide range of student lived experiences at Auburn. And I think part of that does come down to having diverse identities and um, uh, diverse backgrounds. So um, the, the identities of the creators did play a part in the selection process. Um, and I think that the our, our process kind of lied uh, in between using a rubric to assess them, but also um, choosing identities that uh, represented the population of Auburn as a whole. Um, and so to present them, what I did was I wrote accompanying descriptions of the selected ePortfolios. 
Um, what I mean by this is that I kind of highlighted some aspects of each one that I thought were particularly strong. Um, now, the ePortfolios we have on our page, we like to consider excellent overall ePortfolios, but I thought that uh, drawing the reader's attention to specific aspects of each ePortfolio would help um, uh, kind of uh, speak to the strengths of each creator and also um, help guide the uh, students looking at the ePortfolios to one that might better suit them. Um, during this uh, process of presenting them, I wanted to keep a similar number of ePortfolios that we had. So on the previous iteration, I believe we had 15. I didn't think that it was fair to the student body to, um, if I was gonna include more information on each ePortfolio, I didn't think it was fair to reduce the amount that we had, seeing that the goal is to um, give them a wide uh, range of options to look at. Um, and a wide range of things that represent excellence uh, for Auburn. Um, and then the last thing I did is I rewrote the subheading over our ePortfolio examples on the web page. There was just kind of a little blurb about them. And um, I'll talk about it later and I'll show you all what I, what I changed. But I felt that I kind of needed to re, uh, reimagine uh, what the tone of uh, that page would be. Um, if I was going to change uh, kind of the way it looked. Um, so next, we're going to have Jake talk about the rubric and kind of how that's played a role in the process and uh, what it's done uh, for university writing. All right. Thank you very much for that intro, Jonah. If you can go to the next slide, I'll just kind of hop into things. And I apologize in advance. It looks like Box is having a few issues right now, so I won't be able to have the exact version up. Uh, what we did want to show, though, is kind of the chaos of what having rubrics can sometimes be. And as most of y'all come from some sort of educational background or an academic institution, uh, y'all can sort of understand the uh, advantages and disadvantages to having a rubric. It is kind of nice to hide behind the rubric and have this quantifiable piece of information where you can do many checkboxes and without knowing who or whatever the background is, you can say, hey, we rate this ePortfolio as a good example of a professional one. And we wanted to divide it into particular areas. This rubric in particular was used for whenever we recognize the best ePortfolio of the year award. And uh, we thought that this was fairly robust. It had been used several years before, and this would be a good start on what we need to do in order to figure out, okay, how can we recognize these and how can we publish these on our website, both to you know bring attention to the ePortfolio project itself, especially now that it's the outgoing QEP and not the incoming one, and to make it useful for students, faculty, staff, and uh, as uh, departments continue to do ePortfolio projects, we wanted them to not only be able to use it in class, but also use it in a way that represents Auburn University a little bit better. Now, the most difficult part I have to say here is uh, and I fully acknowledge uh, both Jonah and I are speaking from a fairly privileged position on this. So why are we the ones to make this decision? How do we make this decision? Well, we're going to kind of give some suggestions on that. But uh, like I said earlier, this is not the way that we recommend everybody do things. This was a way that managed to work for us. We feel it is relatively robust and that it uh, helps take care of some of the bi biases you'll notice, but not necessarily all of them. So uh, with that, buyer beware kind of put on there. If you could go to the next slide, please, Jonah. I'm going to dive into the four competencies that we used for the rubric in particular. Uh, we wanted critical thinking through reflection to be on there. Uh, part of our ePortfolio process is to actually uh, reflect on the process itself. This more applies to whenever our consultants, our tutors in the Miller Writing Center are creating their own ePortfolios, but it also does extend to uh, having points of reflection on the ePortfolio itself. Uh, since these are sort of living uh, CVs, uh, resumes, things like that, that, uh, we want to make sure that the uh, people looking at them not only see uh, the person being represented properly, but also in a way that helps, that shows some reflective thinking. If we're going into engineering, well, we want to make sure it's not just connected to engineering, but it also connects to some of the more uh, typical problems you might see in engineering or science or biomedical or even your uh, 
your other classes like English, literature, those kind of things, the less hard science-y kind of courses. Uh, next, we want visual literacy to be important. And I think one of the examples that we ran into was we have uh, one or two really cool examples of ePortfolios that look beautiful. They represent the person's background super well. They represent their discipline, and it's just it, genu genuinely cool to look at the ePortfolio itself. However, that sometimes runs into issues of both accessibility for other people watching or looking the ePortfolio, but also how do we decide if we should include this or not? We know there's some misgivings, uh, we know that there's some shortcomings, but do we still include this? Are we right to even include this on here? And our ultimate conclusion is yes, there's going to be some ePortfolios that won't be perfectly accessible, won't be perfectly representative of a particular thing. But if they are like the best example we have of visual literacy, we still want to recognize them and bring attention to them while also highlighting the, hey, we acknowledge that there's some issues here, but you really should take a look and model this for your future ePortfolio when you're putting it together. Uh, technical competency is important too. We want to make sure that the web pages stick around, and we realize with Wix, Weebly, and a few of the other uh, web hosting providers, you might only have them up for a year. Uh, we want to at least make sure that the links we have are updated, that they're kept up to date, but we also want to be able to update them in a way that it's not going to take all of our time. It may take uh, a day, a year kind of thing, and that's pretty fine, but if we're having to do that a day every single month, that's when it's going to get a little on the interesting side of things. Uh, let's see. Uh, what ePortfolios? Uh, we do have a few statements in those, and it just depends on the ePortfolio itself. Uh, just answering the question, the question was, when you say you recognize there are issues with one of the ePortfolios, uh, we do try to highlight certain things. Like if there is uh, one in particular that has issues with it, uh, we try to focus more on the positive than the negative, unless it's just so glaring that we have to acknowledge it kind of things. Uh, we want to highlight the people and we want to recognize them and show that, hey, this is a cool, excellent example. But we also don't want to like uh, tarnish the person's name. Uh, somebody else might link to this and we don't want to say something uh, negative about them, even if there may be some shortcomings. Uh, so we just have to be very careful with the way we word it. We don't want to, uh, so to say, throw somebody under the bus. We want to make sure that they are elevated, recognized, and not diminished in a way. So if it absolutely must be said, we do try to say any of the buyer beware messages if needed. But uh, I think the bigger approach, and Jonah can speak to this uh, on the next section he's doing, it was to recognize the positive more so than the negative. And if there's if there needs to be like a buyer beware, that can be more of the overall message at the top, not necessarily identifying every single negative that comes up. We, we want to exude a little bit more positivity than negativity. And last but not least, uh, one of the things we had to look at was their effective communication, and we ranked them from one to four based on beginning, developing, mature, and professional. Now, what do the two of those, or the four of those actually mean between, say, mature and professional or developing and mature? It just kind of shows the ongoing process. If they're only getting started and don't have much experience, beginner doesn't mean bad. It just means that uh, they are not uh, done ePortfolios possibly as long as somebody else. And uh, we're not going to tell people if we think they're mature, if they're professional, but this helps us internally get at least a pack of ePortfolios that are like, okay, we want to look at these further, we want to get some descriptions together, and make sure this fits the message that we're trying to convey, not just through the Miller Writing Center and University Writing, but also to other people who might be doing an ePortfolio themselves. Uh, that said, it gets the interesting part where we're past the quantifiable information where a rubric lets us do this very removed from a personal perspective, from an emotional perspective. What happens when we want to recognize people of diverse backgrounds, uh, we want to make sure we recognize as many majors on campus as possible, or if a QEP is calling for a particular highlight compared to another semester, how do we justify adding or removing one? Do we want to make it more or less uh, personal. And uh, those are still the things that we're honestly struggling with. We think we've done well to assuage some of those problems, but we do fully admit that because of uh, because of my background as a uh, white male in America, that's going to completely change not only the privilege that I'm 
that I work with, but how I identify and how I recognize other presentations on there. So it's no matter what, you can't completely eliminate bias, but we're hoping that not just through multiple people in being involved in the process, but having that backup, less personal approach is going to help. But as you know, as educators, rubrics can be good and bad, and we're hoping to use it in a more positive way than a negative way. It's a great way to get it started, and then we add the human element at a later time to hopefully have a little bit more information to act on that. So I do see we have another question in there. I'll get a response together for that. We might say that for a discussion at the very end, but thank you all for uh, typing those questions in the chat. I'm going to pass it back to Jonah. He's going to give a few examples of what has been done and hopefully open it up to a more broad discussion so that we can get some of your input, but also give you some of our experience as well. Thank you. Thank you, Jake. Um, all right, so let's take a look at some of the examples of the work that I've been doing uh, recently. So the first thing I wanted to uh, show you is my um, revised subheading for uh, the web page. Um, my goal with this was um, to keep a lot of the language that was in the original one while shifting the focus a little bit. Um, I, in my revised statement, I aim to kind of use a more active voice and shift the attention uh, and the focus of it to the e-portfolios and their creators uh, rather than the university. I think that this kind of empowers and humanizes the uh, e-portfolios a little bit and um, um, identifies that we are trying to represent um, a wide a range of student learning experiences um, at Auburn. Uh, while still um, including uh, words or phrases like thoughtful reflection and relevant artifacts, which are um, aspects of the portfolios that we uh, continue to want to recognize. Um, so yeah, I'll give you all a couple more seconds to read through it if you would like, um, and then we can move on. Um, but Debbie, I can go ahead and answer your question. Um, I have not currently uh, in, in my work explored a way to have like a static version of the websites. Uh, Jake and I have discussed possible means for kind of rotating out old e-portfolios. Um, that's actually been kind of a issue with uh, some of the, or the looking at the current state of the web page, some of them are pretty dated or don't work anymore. Um, so we haven't come up with like a solid plan for that. I think our initial idea was to just kind of uh, look at it either by semester or annually and kind of rotate out ones that are old and uh, bring in some new ones uh, while trying to keep in the same number. Oh, sorry, Jake, I didn't realize you just. Oh, no worry. You spoke on uh, the other part that I didn't cover too. So that actually worked out really well. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. All right, um, let's keep going. So um, I wanted to show you all a couple of examples of the um, descriptions I was talking about. Um, this is actually supposed to be two descriptions. Uh, I uh, The one on the right is supposed to have a bullet point, so I apologize for that. Um, so with this first one on the left, um, I wanted to communicate that uh, uh, AJ Cam's uh, strengths in their uh, e-portfolio, but particularly uh, I wanted to uh, draw the reader's attention to how strong their About Me page was. Um, I thought that it served um, as kind of a great guide to the rest of their um, e-portfolio and uh, it uh, communicated a lot of the aspects of their identity um, really effectively. So my goal with this was to kind of um, have, if a student's looking at the page, they can see that, oh, AJ, did a really good job with their About Me page, but um, overall AJ Cam's uh, e-portfolio is strong altogether. I think that this, just a little bit of information um, kind of humanizes it a bit more than just sharing what their major was. It gives the students browsing the page a bit more direction and it kind of breathes a little bit more life into excellence and kind of the wide range of what we're um, attempting to um, show off as excellent. Um, let's see. Oh, and um, we Jake was talking about this earlier, but in my descriptions, I tried to avoid 
um, using uh, any negative comments on uh, parts of the uh, ePortfolio uh, for the most part. I haven't had to, uh, uh, I haven't really had to um, say anything that like or draw anyone's attention to anything that um, has been negative so far. This is still a working process. I'm not completely done with this, so I'm not saying that it won't happen, but I, I think my idea is that I'd like to maybe even uh, re-rework the uh, subheader in a way that kind of uh, indicates that maybe all of these aren't perfect examples, but hopefully through these descriptions um, showing off uh, their particular strengths, we can kind of draw the students browsing the pages attention to what makes the portfolio strong rather than um, the small aspects of them that might not be perfect. Um, like Jake was saying, I, the last thing I want to do is, um, you know, use this as a space to like criticize students um, e portfolios. That's not what we're trying to do here. And um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of comment on that. Um, and then on the other one, I thought that Robin used a, um, a wide variety of uh, really cool color pairings. It made her uh, e portfolio super easy to read and really fun to look at. Um, and what I was, uh, the role that the rubric really played um, in this for me is that I could kind of, I didn't use the exact language, but I kind of used those four rubric categories to uh, think about what aspects of the um, their portfolio I wanted to highlight. In the case of AJ, uh, I thought that their uh, communication skills um, were really uh, strong. And then in the case of Robin, I thought, her use of visual literacy was um, really strong. So those are kind of the examples. I didn't want them to be too long. Uh, you know, I just wanted them to be something that students browsing the page could glance at and get a better idea of what they were looking at. All right. So just to kind of see what this would look like, uh, I am not a web designer. And so this is not like actually, um, or like the final product by any means. But the idea would be that, um, a page uh, from the student's e-portfolio would be visible on the website, um, typically the home page. But if I'm going to be talking about um, maybe uh, the visual design, I wanted to kind of pick a page that I thought best represented that. Um, so this is Robin's. I think that um, I thought that her colors were cool. And I, I ideally, the they'll be the e-portfolio and the description will be kind of presented side by side. Um, all right, so that kind of wraps up um, what I have uh, to talk about with the process. Um, I now like to open it up to discussion. Um, I've got a couple of questions prepared, but feel free to ask anything um, that you'd like in the chat or, let's see. Yeah, I think All Kim right. had one from chat. We were just kind of going back and forth, but that may just be easier to talk it out for that one. Okay, yeah, Kim, if you want to go ahead and unmute and, um, well, my, my question's not related to that. I just... Um, oh, no worries. <laughs> I notice you use pronouns. Do you survey the people who have agreed to use this and ask them for their pronouns to make sure that you're not making errors? Or is this... How do you work that? That... Um, oh, it, sorry. It, oh, um, actually, wait, Jake probably has a better answer to this. But for the ones that I used in the presentation, uh, I believe both of them provided their pronouns in their e-portfolios. Um, I'm, I haven't, I'm not a part of the uh, process that kind of curates the greater list of e-portfolios that I looked at. So Jake could probably sp uh, speak on that. And Auburn's been doing a much better job of like, not just advertising, hey, let's use pronouns, let's do this, let's do that. But uh, our, our department really embraced that. And so uh, five plus years ago, I think is when it initially started. But uh, if somebody submits it for the best ePortfolio contest every year, uh, we do ask them to provide them or at least say uh, if they would prefer not to specify. We give them uh, options like that. Uh, it's kind of part of our uh, broader, more ongoing process where we're trying to include them as often as possible in all of our uh, relevant media and things like that. Uh, for example, uh, just this past semester, we added it to WC Online, our scheduler, where uh, any student that registers in that can, should they wish, uh, include their pronouns in their uh, profile description now. And we're uh, 
thankfully, Auburn's been great about including a lot of that in Banner and some of the other connected applications. So uh, we're just doing our best to not just keep up with the crowd, but keep up in a way that is uh, positive, reaffirming, and rec recognizes them as well. Uh, that's a very good comment, uh, Cynthia, on there. Uh, it's difficult to like decide, does a student want something to be captured in time? Do we want the future employers to see the old version or the new version? And yeah, it's we've gone back and forth with OIT, our, our Office of Information Technology. We've gone back and forth with some of the staff members here on campus. And we're leaning more towards keeping it live. It does cause more work for us in the end because we need a double, we need to check once a month, once a year for dead links and stuff. But it's, I think it brings fewer problems than the uh, static version does. And just to kind of add to some of the things that Jonah said, uh, part of the title in this presentation talks about justice and how to recognize excellence in here. Uh, one of the biggest things that has helped us with that more than anything is just having more people involved. And any of y'all that served on a committee can know that can come with its own interesting set of issues. But because we all have a different set of biases and all have different things that we're involved with, we want to have more than one set of eyes at absolute minimum looking at and reviewing these and giving their emotional, personal opinion on, okay, should we use this as the example for engineering or should we use this example for uh, creative writing, things like that. Uh, that has helped. It doesn't completely solve the problem. And that's still actually a problem we face to this day is how do we make that tiebreaker decision? And uh, our best alternative so far has been uh, using the rubric as backup if we need to completely remove the personal touch, but also bringing in another uh, person or two. And that can mean a staff member or a student staff person on campus, uh, somebody who's in our office, but maybe not necessarily in the same role that we have. So uh, just varying the backgrounds has been the most successful for us, but we're also kind of curious if anyone has suggestions or experience with that as well. Ooh, Jeff highlights a very interesting issue with the live versus ecstatic version. And I, I, I'm, I'm cherry picking a word or two out of your uh, question, so I apologize for that in advance. But uh, the portfolio platforms in particular have definitely been one of the bigger both barriers, but also potential things we have for being able to present e-portfolios. Things that are more professional and tailored towards actual portfolios definitely have more options for them. But Wix and Weebly, those are the go-to for us. Uh, I like WordPress. I'm an old person. I like to code. So uh, I'm kind of stuck in the past. But when it's just Wix and Weebly, it's really hard to, it's difficult to have any sort of control over the live version. And it's just, it, we're using free services for something that really needs something more tailor-made. This is personal opinion. Uh, just put that hat on for a second. But uh, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, having different platform providers, especially if your university is associated with any of the like more professional portfolio builders, uh, that is extremely helpful if you're having issues with the live versus static version. Ooh, that's fun. Uh, that would actually be a better question for my director at University Writing, Christopher Baskier. Uh, if you'd like more information on that, I can link you his email or information about that. He is the person that is typically in charge of our faculty development. Uh, and I think uh, Jonah or one of the other staff members can correct me if I'm wrong. I want to say the ePortfolio project was kind of his uh, baby of the QEP that we had for that. So. Uh, the type of faculty development we have, we will uh, do group faculty development if a department requests it uh, or if a department head requests it. Uh, it's led typically by our director or our director plus some of our GAs. It's it, We make sure that like a professional staff member is going to be the main point of contact for that. Uh, as far as uh, preparing instructors and creating uh, curation worthy portfolio assignments, tips and models you share. Uh, I don't have any off the top of my head just because I, I wasn't responsible for the faculty development part. But again, I'll link you to our About Us page on uh, the uh, 
ePortfolio website, and uh, so you can reach out to them if you want to find some more information. Uh, as far as I mean with QEP, sorry, uh, Quality Enhancement Program or Plan, depending on which region you're from, uh, basically kind of a guiding principle for the next five-ish, give or so years that uh, the university can put towards both accreditation, towards recognition, towards uh, its mission, and uh, ours is currently moving into a more uh, post-college, I believe, preparation, job preparation, job placement one. Uh, the ePortfolio project was uh, the outgoing QEP. So uh, it was part of university writing. We had an actual studio for that, and uh, we're still using it for presentations and stuff. So uh, part of this process is also adapting from uh, when it was front and center for the university, and now it's kind of gone a little bit to the background, but it's still important. And like, we want to work with the Career Center to help with this. We want to work with some of the other tutoring places on campus to kind of strengthen their programs. And I promised that we would leave a little bit early. If there are any last minute questions, I think now is probably the good time to toss those into chat. Uh, if y'all have any uh, questions or you want to get in touch or ask us more afterwards, I'll include Jonah and Mai's email in here, and we can also forward you some additional information for university staff if you're looking for the more faculty development part. Oh, yes, Cynthia, I see a hand raised. I'll just ask you instead of typing it in. <laughs> no uh, worries. Yeah, I mean, one of, one of the concerns I have, at the, I work at a community college, um, when our students come into our classes, many of our students have little to no experience with any kind of productivity mm -hmm. software at all mm -hmm. and um you know when you you're talking about design justice which i know people are talking about in these seminars i'm really concerned about the the resources to support them i mean as an individual instructor that's something i think the digital literacy is worth the time and the effort but i think the students get a real in, uh, inconsistent experience with that yet most of them are high high social media users. Like they would love to have an awesome e-portfolio, but they might be way behind on the creativity skills involved to create something that might be considered a showcase portfolio. So I'm just curious what other people how you know, I know there's a lot of different programs, peer mentors, whatever, but I'd love to hear some other people speak to that as well. Yeah, and that's that's been kind of the chicken and the egg issue we've encountered. Uh, one thing I love asking uh, freshman classes, especially the instructors, is have you ever asked your uh, incoming freshman uh, where their file is saved? And they'll say, oh, I uploaded it to Blackboard. And I'm just like, okay, but where did you save it? Is it in your documents? Is it on your C drive? Is it? And there's this interesting from millennial to uh, the Zoomer generation, whatever you want to call it nowadays, where uh, because it's so easy to use computers now, our knowledge is only kind of surface deep. And what we try to do, especially early on, was catch it in the composition courses. We paired up with them a little bit early on. Uh, but there's not a great answer beyond people being self-motivated to find it. Uh, that's my personal opinion on that. Uh, have any other uh, people in this discussion encountered that? Feel free to uh, unmute if you've got some feedback for Cynthia. Oh, just bringing attention to Jeff's comment earlier, he recommends a program that is a little bit more user friendly, it sounds like. So if anyone's looking for alternatives, that is a great option. Uh, another one for the uh, getting people familiar with these uh, types of ePortfolios. I can't remember if it's Wix or Weebly. One of them specifically will come out and do presentations and you think, oh gosh, another presentation, they're trying to sell something. It's actually decent information and it's a great intro for the course. So if you see any of those options, don't dismiss them immediately and think they're just a sales pitch, uh, especially if it's the one where it gives you the free uh, Wix Pro for a year kind of thing. It's so worth it, even if there's a little bit of a sales pitch in it, it gets you at least familiar with the software. Ooh, even better. No, that's we love it when uh, people who've made the software are uh, talking about things like that or who are involved with the uh, company itself. So thank you for sharing that. We genuinely appreciate it. Um, I thought I heard Amy talking yesterday. Amy was at Auburn, and I thought mm -hmm. she said that the the writing centers 
all their students were trained um, to do e-portfolios and would support students in their e-portfolio cre uh, creation. So I think uh -huh. that might be something, Cynthia, that would be very useful. Yeah, I yeah. can speak briefly on that. Uh, so I have uh, just been hired to be a graduate assistant um, over the past uh uh, just over the summer, but the past two years I've spent being a writing consultant for uh, Auburn. And over the last year, we went through a whole kind of professional development series uh, centered around uh, creating an e-portfolio. And uh, kind of through that process, I think all of the consultants, um, we got to spend a lot of time uh, doing consultations amongst each other. And uh, I think it did a good job of preparing us all to work um, with some of those more popular um, like Wix, Weebly kind of platforms. And I think we are all pretty capable of providing uh, a strong uh, strong help to students that might uh, not know how to start or work through um, an e-portfolio. So I, I think it, it, it has been helpful for us for sure. All right. Well, I think I think that's about uh, it. Maybe we can take um, just one more question. But thank, I'd like to thank everyone for coming out, and uh, thank you all so much uh, for all the wonderful participation. This has been a um, oh yeah, Jake's got the contact information in the chat. Um, yeah, this has been a great first presentation. I was a little nervous going into it, but I uh, I hope you all enjoyed it, um, and I hope that you all have fun at the rest of the conference. And uh, yeah. Indeed, thank you for your attention today. We appreciate it. If you wish to reach out to us, I've linked our webpage as well as our direct emails. Uh, thank you again for the discussion. I was expecting this to only last about 25, 30 minutes, but that was some excellent discussion at the end. We really appreciate it. Hope you'll have a fantastic experience at ABLE and uh, we look forward to seeing y'all in more presentations afterwards. Thank you so much, Jake and Jonah, I like especially knowing that's your first presentation. That's just wonderful. Um, I am going to share screen again as we're closing, and that is not the screen I meant to share. Uh, so let me try to find the right one on my screen. The joys uh, of online conferences. Yes. So I think it went away. I'm going to stop sharing till I find it because there's a bunch of, of windows open. I want to remind everyone that they can visit our uh, handouts and things you know, on the website to learn more about opportunities. We also um, have many activities going on today. Um, Shark Tank has been postponed. If you missed that information, what this means for you is now, if you haven't yet, you can apply. So send us information on your pitch for uh, Shark Tank, and we'll look forward to seeing everyone there with us in the fall. I am going to stop recording, and thank you all so much for coming today.